here's how to level up your career and get a six-figure job in cybersecurity in 2025. If you're trying to get a higher salary, there are three ways to do this. But first, I want to start with my personal career path in cybersecurity, along with all of the salaries in between. I've always been super open about my salary transparency and how much I got paid in my cybersecurity jobs, starting out with my first official corporate job, which was my internship at JP Morgan Chase. Now, this was only a 10-week internship, but the average salary, if I worked for the entire year, would have been equivalent to around $72,000 per year. Personally, I thought this was really, really good for an internship salary, and your salaries as an intern are generally fixed, and there isn't as much room to negotiate, but it will highly depend on the company you go into, the sector it's in, as well as the location you're placed in. After that, my first full-time cybersecurity job out of college was in a cybersecurity rotational program. My original offer was for $105,000 per year in the New York City metro area, which was already way more than I expected for my first job out of college, graduating with my bachelor's degree in IST. And not to mention, I really didn't have any certifications at this point besides a small computer security and digital forensic search that was offered by my university. So it wasn't a internationally recognized or a huge certification at all. I did negotiate my salary and we landed on $115,000 per year for my first cybersecurity job out of college. I'm so really thankful for my past self and my support system at the time for really pushing me to negotiate salaries. This was my first time ever negotiating a salary, but negotiating your base salary makes a huge difference for future salaries that you have because this first negotiation really sets the stage for all of your future salaries and negotiations for the rest of your career. So I do think this is a very, very important skill to learn. And then finally, my last cybersecurity job as an information security analyst, I was making about $123,000, $124,000 per year working fully remote. And what I really liked about this job is the fact that it was fully remote, so I could work anywhere in the US, which was a really, really big perk. I know nowadays remote jobs are not as easy to get, and I am personally really grateful that I had that experience. Okay, so now that we've covered my full career timeline, what exactly are the three things that it takes to level up your career and your salary? Number one, getting certifications. Number two, getting better skills. And finally, number three, negotiating your salary. Of course, whether this be for the current job that you're in or the next job that you're going into in cybersecurity. And one of the best ways to level up your career and stand out to employers for high paying cybersecurity jobs is by having the right certifications on your resume. I'm partnering with Offsec, who is a sponsor of today's video, to cover the top two cybersecurity career paths, defensive security and offensive security. For defensive security or blue team, you can choose from an SOC, incident response or threat hunting course and certification. As part of each course, you'll get a self-paced learning environment, including hands-on technical labs that give you real world blue team experience. You'll develop in-demand skills using the tools and techniques that security professionals leverage at the front lines of defense. What's unique about Offsec's approach is you'll learn to defend by thinking like an attacker. Earning a defensive certification means you're battle-tested and ready for roles like an SOC analyst, threat hunter, cybersecurity analyst, and incident response engineer. And for offensive security, you can choose between penetration testing or web application security courses and certifications. Offsec's roots are in offensive security, where they've built an unmatched reputation. Their courses go beyond theory, focusing on practical, hands-on skills essential to uncovering, exploiting, and securing vulnerabilities. If you've reviewed job listings for offensive security or red team roles, you'll see that offsec certifications like the OSCP are among the most sought after credentials employers seek in their ethical hacking candidates. You'll learn foundational pen testing and web security methodologies, tools, and techniques while working in a hands-on self-paced lab environment where you'll get to practice attacking live machines as part of your training. You can start your career with Learn One and get 20% off your annual subscription that provides full access to a course of your choice with two exam attempts and access to course prereqs. This promotion runs for a limited time, so I'd highly recommend taking advantage of it while you can through the link in my description. Okay, so one of the most important things you want to consider when you're targeting high paid cybersecurity jobs is to make sure that you're choosing the optimal career path. This is because some cybersecurity niches don't pay as well as others. But along with that, you also wanna focus on job market supply and demand. For example, if a lot of people are applying to the typical cybersecurity analyst role right now, then you may want to go for something a bit more higher level with more skills needed for the job, like a junior pen testing role or an SOC level one or a junior SOC analyst role. This all comes down to getting the right skills to get higher paying jobs. The reason why some cybersecurity professionals are paid more than others really comes down to their background and their skill set. This means if you know very niche skills like digital forensics compared to a generalist security role, it'll be a lot easier for you to stand out when you're applying to very specialized roles that typically tend to pay higher salaries compared to a generalist role. 
However, if you guys have watched any of my previous videos, you know that I personally am a cybersecurity generalist. I would say that in my early career, my salaries were decently high, at least from what I've seen in the market. But of course, I also knew more specialized cybersecurity professionals in their early career who are making higher salaries than me because they were more focused specifically on the red team or the blue team. So yes, in the beginning, you can definitely be a bit more generalist and try out red team, try out blue team, maybe even GRC, which were actually all the paths that I took because I was in a cybersecurity rotational program. So I got to experience all these different areas in cyber, but again, that may potentially impact how much you can make in your early career and going into more experienced roles. Because you may not be as specialized as someone who spent the first five, seven years of their career in specifically red team, and then eventually studying for their OSCP, for example, and getting even higher salaries for their next pen testing or ethical hacking jobs. And if you really think about it, these are all things you have to start planning for early on in your career. Even in your first cybersecurity job, you want to make sure that everything you're doing is with intent and you're going into red team or blue team or even GRC as part of your career plan. Of course, apply to as many jobs in as many niches as possible because you never know in the beginning which areas you may be most interested in because you just haven't had experience in them yet. But if you're someone who also wants to focus on salary growth and career progression, then there is that added pressure to make sure you find an area in cybersecurity that you enjoy and then start specializing as quickly as you can to get to those higher, more specialized jobs, which will also then come with higher salaries. And that is really the most optimized way to level up in your career. So these are the steps I recommend taking. First, look at the top five cybersecurity roles you're interested in and check out the ones with the highest salaries and career trajectories. Typically, if you look at different career sites, you'll get an idea of what the salaries are, of course, you can also check by city and the sector that you're going into. Typically, jobs in tech and finance will often pay more than jobs in healthcare and government. But of course, there are always going to be anomalies and certain cities may be more specialized or focused in one specific sector. This also means that you can consider more niche areas, for example, like GovTech, which is short for government tech. And it is less popular because it's known to be slower and many of the jobs in GovTech do need clearance. But it also means that you have great hireability and a really good job security and not to mention really great pay and benefits. So it's really a give and take based on the career that you want to build for yourself. For example, yes, GovTech is harder to get into because clearance can take a very long time. The process is very lengthy. It can take months. I've heard of some clearance checks getting up to a year depending on the level they are going for. But again, it also means that you could get higher salaries and because it's so much work to get in, also a lot less competition from other candidates applying to those jobs compared to a typical cybersecurity job where thousands of candidates are eligible and can apply for a GovTech role, the candidate pool is a lot more limited, so you have a lot more chances to stand out. These are all just things to consider when you're applying to jobs. But again, mapping this out in your early career and realizing, hey, these are my five-year, 10-year, 15-year career goals, which was exactly what I was doing when I first started my career, is really the best way for you to figure out where you're going and how you're gonna get there. Every career switch, every company that you move to, every salary negotiation, this should be all part of your career plan. And it should also make sense for your career. I wouldn't recommend just jumping ship every year to a different company just for the salary bump, because at the end of it, you could find yourself with four or five different companies under your belt in just a short amount of time and not really having deep enough skills to help set you up for future success. So yes, increasing your salary is important, but of course, learning as much as you can from the jobs that you're in, getting new certifications, learning new skills on the side, working on cybersecurity projects, attending conferences, keeping up with industry trends, news, finding a mentor or multiple mentors even. These are all important things that you also have to do as part of your career planning. Another great way to help expand your job search is to get recruiters and employers coming to you. This means making connections with hiring managers and recruiters on LinkedIn. I've seen this play out and actually work for someone where they got an offer because they applied to a job on LinkedIn and LinkedIn will oftentimes have the hiring manager or the person who put up the job listing on the job listing itself. He applied to the job and then reached out to the hiring manager directly, thanked them for the opportunity, let them know they applied and the hiring manager responded to them and thanked them for applying. And now this hiring manager remembers this person's name, knows her face because they're connected with them on LinkedIn. When they're looking through a list of hundreds of resumes of names that are unfamiliar, they'll find this one person that stands out who actually follow up and it really does set a good impression. So definitely don't be afraid of reach out to people on LinkedIn. It is a professional networking app for a reason. You could also join recruiting groups. This means looking on Discord, Facebook, LinkedIn for recruiting groups where recruiters and headhunters basically are trying to connect jobs to candidates. And a lot of times some recruiters are working for the company and they're looking for the right candidates that are qualified and have the right skills skills 
and other times headhunters have candidates that are qualified and they're trying to find jobs with them and it's basically just like a matching game so you want to get in there and i personally joined recruiting groups actually where i've even seen candidates say hey this is my experience this is my skill set if anyone has a job opportunity please feel free to dm me or reach out and recruiters will actually reply and ask to see their resume so go to the places where recruiters and hiring managers are looking for candidates another great place for this is conferences career fairs networking groups like b-sides cybersecurity is really all about community you'll find that a lot of people are connected with other people in the industry and someone you meet at a cybersecurity b-side could have a connection who is looking for an soc analyst with some junior level experience and you could be that perfect candidate but again it's about putting yourself out there and networking as much as you can with cybersecurity communities online and offline and of course you also want to get the right certifications on your resume the oscp is a great one if you're looking to get into red teaming or pen testing this was the one that actually my previous red team mentor was working on when i was in my first cybersecurity job and i still remember all the shadowing sessions i had and seeing how they were preparing for their oscp certification it's just crazy how much you can learn with one certification so depending on whatever sector you're going into get the right certifications for it make sure you can find that certification on different job listings for the job you're going into to make sure that it's a certification that employers want and of course make sure that you're negotiating your salaries whenever you can whether it be for an internal promotion an internal job switch or if you're applying to a new job another thing i want to recommend is not something traditional cybersecurity videos I've seen would recommend, but that is also getting some work for yourself on the side in the realm of cybersecurity. This could be cybersecurity consulting, cybersecurity content creation, which I've seen is really big with Gen Z nowadays. So many new cybersecurity and tech creators is a great way to share resources, share your learning experience, and just find community with others in the cybersecurity space. This is just a new form of networking, I think, for the new generation. Personally, I guess I'm also Gen Z, but, but I'm not always as in the loop as younger Gen Z, but I really do think that it's great to have something that you're working on on the side. Of course, as long as it doesn't hinder your day job or have any conflicts of interest, but I've also had previous coworkers who were virtual CISOs, also did consulting or cybersecurity content creation, did cybersecurity career coaching, speaking engagements at conferences and at networking events, and even freelancing on platforms like Fiverr and Upwork. And not to mention, this gives you a bit more of a diversified income stream and it's flexible considering you're working on your own time, which could also help you get closer to your six-figure income goals to help level up in your cybersecurity career. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Don't forget, you can start your career with Offsec, learn one and get 20% off your annual subscription that gives you full access to a course of your choice with two exam attempts and access to course prereqs. This promotion runs for a limited time, so I'd highly recommend and taking advantage of it while you can through the link in my description. Don't forget to also stay connected on LinkedIn, Discord, Instagram. I'll have all my handles linked below. I share more real-time resources on those platforms since it's typically easier to get a short form video or a LinkedIn post out compared to a longer form sit down video like this. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!